Yo, it's your boy Logos, and tell my finish off the last 20 minutes of this organism's quote unquote, I don't know, deep dive video on the Kevin Samuels, even though the first 30 minutes that I had to spend my life listening to really didn't have any facts, it was just opinions and the stuff that he claimed was easily disproven or already known. I don't understand what he was trying to prove in this video besides the same shit as before where think like me or you're a coon or racist was a very simple minded way of thinking but I'm not surprised by him. After learning more about him I could tell he's just disingenuous and fake but let's laugh at him a little bit more. Again, patriarchy is genderless, and for some black women, there is this intoxicating appeal for the presence and counsel of a strong man. Comes with that is that very traditional idea, the idea that a woman's worth is directly correlated to her ability to pull a man. Mm. And so, a lot of these women, even if they're not even, even if they're not in church, their sense of self is this idea of attaching our sense of self to some external uh thing that i never like a family how dare these women go to kevin samuels willingly and say i want these things how can i best get them and what stuff can i do or not do to make sure that happens like how dare these women decide that they want a family and not just work in a career or a job for the rest of their life and that be the high point of their success and happiness crazy really took the time to discover my true self instead i projected it on on one of my functions and when that function is taken away from me i lose my i literally lose myself and so a lot of women a lot you. of black women project their sense of worth on their ability to pull a man and their inability to do that or inability to to pull a, a high value man um it impacts their sense of self because that's what we're taught that said let's not mince words here kevin it's not just taught it's a biological oh no ingrained thing in all living beings to reproduce have a family and carry on your genes so to say that they have fallen for some type of trick or kevin sam was making them do something or holding up white supremacy on or you know the bullshit this this organism says i don't know it just sounds ridiculous to me he says he care about the black community but he has a problem with black people getting together and coupling and having stable families and he's such a hypocrite because he said before that he has a wife he has children he has a traditional family but some at the same time he wanted to say kevin samuels or other people are perpetuating some nonsense because they push families this man's stupid Samuels was the king of the black manosphere for one reason, because of his hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of male sims. I don't understand the whole of it. I, I can't call it. But again, notice that the manosphere figures who are the most toxic and most outwardly misogynistic are also the most popular. Black women may have helped push Samuels over the top in terms of success and notoriety, but it's men who enjoyed watching him berate and belittle black women who were his lifeblood. I know that every once in a while he may have gave good advice, good advice either to a male or a female. I know that some of the women calling in were saying absolutely insane things sometimes and needed somebody to tell them what they heard in the moment. Although I find it hard to believe that someone hadn't told those women that before. Like I'm, I'm almost positive a chunk of those girls just wanted to be on TV, basically. Like this was just their... Yeah, someone be on TV, but just because somebody tells you something doesn't mean you're actually going to listen to them. Sometimes it takes somebody with the maybe higher authority or more esteem or more gravitas, and they can actually lay out the reason in a much more qualified, understandable manner. It had nothing to do with them just want to be completely famous or anything like that. They might have heard it before, but the guy or woman that they heard it from didn't give an actual valid reason compared to Kevin Samuels giving valid reasons and not sugarcoating it. Calling in to be embarrassed for clout. Like the silly people that go on American Idol to get embarrassed and they know they can't sing. Now I've had numerous dudes tell me that Samuels inspired them to be better. And like, I wanna hold space for that. And I'm sure that is real to a handful of those dudes, but Samuels didn't get a million and a half subscribers for his inspirational quotes. He didn't get a million that? and a half subscribers for the moments where he gave good advice to people. 
he How got he there because he embarrassed black women. This guy is such a phony. Once again, these black women are completely, what's the word? Able-bodied, smart, I don't know. Barely, like, enough sensical to decide for themselves that I want to go on this show. But somehow he's exploiting them, even though he didn't force nobody, capture nobody, or lock them up in his, uh, excuse me, his attic or basement, and made them go on the show and say stupid stuff. There is no, there, there is never any other accountability. It's either a coon and black man fault or the white man fault. And, and sadly, somehow this guy has subscribers. That was so fascinating to me with Kevin Samuels fans. Like, I think you can learn a lot by studying how someone talks to you about their fave and then how they talk with their fellow fans about that fave. Like to give a totally innocuous example, um, when This Is Us came on the scene, I felt like, well, okay, that looks really good, but it looks super emotional. I don't know if I can, <laughs> I don't yeah. know if I psychologically am ready for all that. So whenever This Is Us fans would talk to me, they'd be like, oh no, you know, it's not that emotional. You should come check it out. But then I'd go and watch their posts where they're talking amongst themselves and it's like, oh my God. I just this is got, so sad. I got emotionally annihilated. Once again, I'm never gonna recover. I was like, okay, see. <laughs> The truth now that, you're telling the truth <laughs> and, that, and that again that's totally innocuous and i'm sure this is us is a good show but you see the same thing playing out with kevin samuels in a less than innocuous way because they when you ask them about kevin samuels they'll say to you well no come on he's just giving life lessons that help everybody how to be more realistic out of this that and the third but as soon as you go to their page and they're talking to other Kevin Samuels fans, it's like, yo, did you see how she, he knocked yeah. that girl down a peg? People always say is that, I think I'm, I'm trying to remember what people said in his videos, is that now you, they're like, oh, y'all always have standards for men. Now you know what it feels like to have somebody say, oh, well, here's what you're rated as. You can never see me because of blank, blank, blank. Uh, I, I think that's what I've seen people say. So I get the pain point of the niggas ain't shit rhetoric. I get the catharsis for a lot of black men seeing another black man push back against that. But it doesn't excuse the problem that he presented. It doesn't excuse the fact that he was a fraud. It doesn't excuse the conservatism. It doesn't. It doesn't excuse the conservatism. Like I said before, this guy is so simple minded. He can't handle people having different opinions than him, especially if they share the same skin color. And he thinks he's smart and he claims he does real research stuff. Even though his whole Black Republicans video, he talking about it took him about three hours to did it, but somehow he called Thomas Sal and other people who are much more intellectual, much more knowledgeable, and much more rational than him, or he could ever be. They're somehow grifters, but he's not. <laughs> excuse any of the shit it just makes you look bad if that's the hill you're going to die on that you'll take all these awful pieces of rhetoric these ugly moments and take that as long as it means that somebody who is not you has the power to talk back to a handful of black women that you never talk to yourself new challenger there was something that came up to me in the last couple of days that I wish I'd have initially put in the script to further like illustrate the anti-black nature of, of Samuels and specifically how his misogyny is such a key ingredient <laughs> to his success. Um, I talk a lot about conservatism. I obviously don't like conservatism. Of I course. definitely don't fuck with Republicans, especially black Republicans and yada, yada, yada. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, you can't but think I don't of your own want mindset. to conflate that with black men who just have traditional lifestyles and experiences in their home lives and their relationships their families their children etc like yourself i like like yourself so he recognized like right, i'm saying a lot of bullshit and i'm actually doing the bullshit i'm claiming he's a coon for doing so let me make a little addendum and saying yeah i know i do the exact same stuff i'm talking shit to him about but you know i'm a little bit different because i i'm i'm not conservative and though you don't know exactly how much liberal or conservative kevin samuels were i don't support white supremacy even though kevin samuels never supported white supremacy and he was all about having the black community and increase the marriage go up and building up black families 
So he just doing nothing but bullshit <laughs> and try to cover up for the nonsense he just spouted for the next 40, the last 40 minutes. I feel the need to consistently say this. While I'm not a conservative, I live a very regular ass nigga life. I am not non-binary. Me and my wife are not polyamorous. We're raising two boys. We're raising them as boys until further notice. Yeah, traditional. As much I, as I align with leftist politics and policies, I, I my alignment with them is more about wanting people to have the freedom to self-determine how they seek to choose to live their lives. It's not an explicit denigration of traditional ideas of living, except for the many ways in which those traditional ideas seem to always want to limit and oppress other people from living life the way they deem necessary. And that's mm -hmm. like, I, I would need a lot more time to unpack that and I'm not. He, he says he cares about people living their life as they see fit, but if he was to talk to somebody that disagreed with him, especially a black person, he'll probably say, you need to change your way of thought. You're wrong and you're cool and this and the other. You don't care about people living their own lives or people having their own opinions. He just saying this bullshit to cover up himself and the fact that he isn't actually doing the stuff we preach. I'm not going to do it here in this long ass video, but I wanted to bring up an example that kind of illustrates the dichotomy of how there's people that are conservative and still serve righteousness to an extent. And then there's niggas like Kevin Samuels. And to illustrate this, I wanted to bring up Jason Wilson. Some people may have seen Jason Wilson. He's went viral a couple of times. He's a karate instructor in Detroit that has for years talked about masculinity and raising boys to be more emotionally aware. He's talked about his very traditional marriage, how he and his wife have managed a traditional normative lifestyle while still being progressive in the way they address each other and address their problems. Now, I don't know Jason Wilson's politics. It may end up that he's doing some fuck shit on the back end. Oh, so fuck shit by not agreeing with your stupid ass and Marxism. <laughs> like I said, he is a fucking fake. And then I'll have to like hold that L uh, after the fact. But everything <laughs> I know but... about this man just shows. Yeah, hey, hey, here's he... another thing. When people, this is another example of why when somebody calls you this and the other, you shouldn't take them seriously all the time. Because this guy is such a fake and a phony that if you don't agree with him, he'll put a label on you. So just because somebody put a label on you doesn't mean that person actually knows what the hell they're talking about. He genuinely cares about black men and boys, and he does this without the need to denigrate black women or women in general. And unsurprisingly, he is much less well known among the weak ass niggas of the manosphere. How, you than know that? How would you know that? I know who that guy is. I've seen many of his videos in the martial arts and lessons that he teach about emotional awareness and understanding, especially he had that video he had with like his father the kid's father and the son and you're saying like this way on your father's back when you don't behave in school like people know who this man is this guy is just so fucking stupid that he puts everybody in the box and say if you're part of manosphere or you like Kevin so you must agree with this this and this and you'll know this this and that and you hate black women and you hate the black community a uh, Kevin Samuels if you look at Jason Wilson, that is a traditionally masculine looking man. He has got the beard. He does karate. He's clearly a solid dude. He does not feel the need because he's secure in his masculinity to denigrate black women or to be showy or extra or alpha or dominate on people and all the other bullshit you get from the manosphere. It just exudes from him. And I want to point that out because I know a lot of conservative black men that may not understand the necessity of every leftist stance that I understand, but that I can at least respect is righteous in their intention. So if you are in need of a classically masculine figure to usher you along the way in improving your own sense of self and your own sense of masculinity, I suggest hollering at Jason Wilson. You'll probably come out of it way better than you would following any of the niggas in the manosphere, especially Kevin Samuels. Just. So the one he, he how long is this clip? Uh, one thirty one to about one nineteen. Okay, so about like fifty two minutes, a little bit fifty rounds, something like that. So within the fifty minutes or the forty or thirty some minutes I got through so far, he said one thing that was actually true and that I agree with, and that this this guy, this martial arts teacher, I think is a very good role model. Model, and he does put out good knowledge that men should listen to and retain and try to apply to their everyday lives. After that, he goes back in on his nonsense and this and the other. And once again, it's a cold day in hell before I give a shit about <laughs> this nigga gotta say. I'm sorry, this organism. Trying to throw folks a bone here and back to the video. 
If he didn't make fun of black women, you wouldn't know who he is. And most of his fan base That's a lie. wouldn't have. That's a lie because I knew who he was. And the, most of the stuff that I watched was a lot of him talking about men and men improvement and how to better themselves. He had subscribers. He had plenty of subscribers before he talked about women. But once again, he doesn't do research. He just goes off his emotions and calls to random people with the same thought and says, you want to jump on the bullshit call and help me put a video together? have cared he'd be like the other thousands of well-dressed black men on youtube offering fashion advice and very few of them have over a million subscribers and it deeply saddens me that this man was celebrated for this nonsense for these regressive messages to black men and women <laughs> that basically told us that we weren't good if we weren't aspiring to a way of life closer to whiteness as possible to that whiteness. women shouldn't this aspire so to fucking... education and viable and positive career aspirations that they should only seek marriage as valid validation that black that men what he said he couldn't be whole without fathers in their lives and that dreadlocks or jordans are clear examples of how black men are lesser than their peers who dress better uh that's not what he said he said when you're a professional setting you should be dressing like a professional if you're a grown man you should be having a much more diverse wardrobe besides jordans that's common sense if you're older and you want to be a person that makes good money you're going to have to have a nice wardrobe so you can dress in a professional setting you can't fucking walk around in t-shirts with bullshit Marxist lingo on it like he would like to do. He took respectability politics and pushed them to the limit with zero pushback because he had an army of simps defending him at every situation, saying that he was misunderstood or taken out of context or really didn't mean that or, or you're just focusing on the negative stuff. You don't want to focus on the ways in which he just wanted to help us. And it's just like. All I hear is like dude saying, yes, can I have another? Like, that's all I hear from y'all. Speaking of people being domed by this nigga, with his success came a wide acceptance from the same first wave of the black manosphere that rejected him. Aside from a few figures, the old black manosphere all eventually began to celebrate and curry favor for Samuels, or at least not talk bad about him, partially in fear of his simps who would jump to his defense and partially because they really wanted to ride his coattails. Like I said, when Kevin Sims had um, 100,000 subscribers, you saw a lot of YouTubers, some who never even showed their faces or had a lackluster background, start wearing suits and then start decorating their backgrounds. You know, that's still going on. I think everybody's trying to be the next Kevin Samuels because just how popular he was the most popular person to come out of the black manosphere. Like nobody oh, had. So what you're telling me is when somebody sees that a type of method is successful, people will try to mimic that method in their own way to try to mimic that success. Like every other decision that we make in our lives, we see somebody that does something and they're successful with it. And usually we ask them or we copy them to try to get that same amount of success. But somehow, some way, black men aren't allowed to give their opinion unless it aligns with his bullshit. Mm, mm, mm. Margin. It's clear that Samuels was going to be maybe the first figure from the black manosphere to make it off of YouTube and into the mainstream. Samuels had already had a few appearances on significant podcasts such as No Jumper and Joe Button, but he also in the past year interviewed Nicki Minaj and popped up in a future video. And one week after he died, he had his biggest mainstream moment in a cameo appearance on Atlanta. It was- Is Childish Gambino or Donald Glover a conservative supporter of white supremacy when you- <laughs> <laughs> when he literally made a, a song called This is America and talking about the racism and that type of stuff and police, police brutality. Is Donald Glover a white supremacist because he allowed Kevin Sams to be on this show, which he wrote and created from my memory? Like, this is this is when you get into like the reads and the actual facts of the information because you call um, people simps or coons for supporting Kevin Samuels while all the other people who clearly show they're not simps or coons. Once again, this man doesn't allow, oh, I'm sorry, he's not a man. This organism doesn't allow for any type of free thought outside of his own jailed in Marx's ideology. It was only a matter of time before he was, I don't know, maybe hosting a talk show or a radio show, or maybe popping up on Fox News like his homeboy Thomas Sowell. And the funny thing is, the most like embarrassing part is that if you pay attention to the way he was showing up, on the Nicki Minaj video and the different things he was doing when he was touching the mainstream, all of that red pill shit, all of that high value man, average at best nonsense went out the window. When Samuels was talking to Nicki Minaj, he was a very affable, gentle, respectful man. It was like a whole new person. Okay, that's 
see this is another way he is <laughs> he is a liar because when people were first going on this show he would treat them with respect unless they said something crazy like disrespectful or they kept cutting them off so to add like every single woman that were on this podcast or on his youtube channel just yelled at or disrespect or such and so forth is another lie but he built up this bullshit lie so he could come up this next bs response if that was the person that had been on YouTube those last couple of years, he'd have never reached this level of fame. He let Nicki Minaj talk to him and talk to black men in a way that he swears he was against. To black women, real quick. Can we stop talk? Can we stop posting all day on TikTok? Because I, I, re, I newly went to TikTok and I, and I just kept seeing this. Black mm -hmm. women, can we stop talking about if black men, if these successful black men want us or not? What I've been seeing is, I feel like I've been seeing men using that as an opportunity because they they've been hurt and and somebody done went to them and they've been using it as a as a way to come out and lash out and poke fun at black women and use it as a way to feel like they somebody or they something or so so for all you niggas that's doing that on TikTok wherever the fuck y'all at eat a dick go away nobody gives a shit about you okay well here's and here's the thing. There's a lot of hurt on both sides. And to their credit, other men in the Manosphere called him out on this. Kim Minaj asked the question, you know, why, why is it that when black men become successful, you know, they go over the fence. And Kevin gave her a Steve Harvey answer. You know, he gave a very real general, we're not talking about you type of answer. There was no smoke. And to me, it wasn't, it wasn't a genuine answer. You know, I don't, I don't, and again, I don't, I don't think the show was about interviewing Nicki Minaj. That would be something that she would have to agree to, which she probably wouldn't agree to. And it would be smart for her not to agree to it. Now, again, it makes. So he doesn't show the clip of, you know, Kevin Samuel's response or any of the other responses to Nicki Minaj's questions. I didn't see the full Nicki Minaj interview because I really don't care for Nicki Minaj. I don't listen to her music. I'm not a fan or anything like that. And I really don't care for their both back and forth conversation i care more for like kevin samuel's monologues and stuff like that even the guests like the guests are fine but i would rather care about the first like hour and a half where he would just go into a monologue and we'll talk about the black community or black men and stuff like that i really don't give a shit about celebrities i don't know just me but like i was saying he doesn't he don't actually show what kevin Samuel did wrong he just gives another guy's opinion on how he's upset about it I don't know. And of course, the guy he does choose is confirm his own biases. Because of course he would. He's a Marxist. You know, he wouldn't allow free thought or somebody to disagree with them. But he's a strong black man. No, he's an organism. Them look fucking ridiculous. But they, some of them at least had the balls to notice that Samuels, when it was time to get a bag and move on from their weird space, was more than happy to leave them behind. And it speaks to how easy of a formula a lot of this red pill shit is, how all you have to do is, you know, maybe look the part a little bit, have a good speaking presence Asshole. and then just talk that shit. And like these dudes will come find you if you give off enough powerful, authoritative I'm alpha energy to say the things so they're small. too scared to say themselves. God, damn. The man's spirit, like I was saying, there's a there's a uh why would guys be afraid to say this to a woman directly that they know and talk to i say it myself if you say something crazy i must tell you why it's crazy i'm gonna give you facts and logic of why it's crazy what are these women gonna do to me <laughs> if i tell them this stuff that they're saying doesn't make sense they're gonna do absolutely nothing they can argue back and forth with me but outside of that what do i have to be afraid of i'm damn sure not afraid of a debate like this organism is so what do black men be scared of you could only be scared you're gonna be scared if you have no idea what you're talking about if you have no logic no reason no facts or i don't know any path to make you to make the stuff that you believe in make sense then no matter what you believe in or what it is it's faulty like there's a reason why apparently this guy this organism doesn't make or do debates and if he does uh somebody ask him about a debate he say, oh, that's not me, or that's not my job, I'm, I'm not here to debate people. Because he can't debate, he don't know what the fuck he's talking about. Uh, a hegemonic drive 
if I could say, that's not coming from us, but which society demands this sort of imagery of us. Mm-hmm. And uh, men feel pressed into it and people are reacting to it because we're also cultural markers for entertainment. Right. Uh, so you get guys creating a podcast talking about women, sex and relationships. Now, they may be one, maybe 5% of all podcasts that men make. But because of how we're situated, them doing that is going to garner a reaction greater mm-hmm. than the weight of what their content is actually providing because they represent something. Um, and then there's a group of men, again, not all of us, not most of us, that get caught in this this path of being uh, disaffected, frustrated from uh, all of the oppressions that you got to navigate. And then <laughs> you fall into this tunnel and yeah, all of us blaming black women. Only, only a person I'm dealing with is hearing this bullshit for 50 minutes now. You could count two hours if you include the last video I did, but that's only a person I have to deal with at the moment. I have to listen to this black man, oh, I'm sorry, this organism, talk and act like he did deep research and fast when he did clearly none at all. Like about black, black Republicans, about Kevin Samuels, like yada, yada, yada. You're Marxist. I mean, you're a conservative, or you, in my opinion, you preach conservative ideology and that's white supremacist. And due to that, you're anti black, and somehow you hate black women, even though your daughter's black, your mother's black, and you probably date black women in the majority of cases. But <laughs> anti black. Your, the things that you're dealing with, your frustrations, your isolation, uh, their inability or the unwillingness to accept you, mm-hmm. basically. You know, we're talking about that. And then if we go back to the man not and how he uh, him and Sylvia uh, Winter before him used genre as a way to describe the existence of black people, black men and women, because we exist outside of European gender gender constructs. What? What What the fuck is he outside of European gender? Are you not a man? Well, he's not. But other black men, are you not a man? Black woman, are you not a woman? What is he talking about? Gender constructs? Did, did, the, did the traditional family not exist before Europe? Or or they came before Europeans came over to Africa? Are, is he serious right now? Holy shit, how much left of this dumb shit I gotta listen to? All right, six minutes. I There's a bar here. I can't read it. Reach it. It's not realistic. Black women also wanted me to reach some version of that bar. At least they feel that way. Part of it is creating this straw man and then reacting to it. Same thing in the uh, divestment. thing. Black men hate me, so I gotta think this way. Black women are terrible, so I have to do this. They they position oh. people in our community as antagonists. Uh, and I think those things that we're, will make us unique and, and different because we're navigating things like racism, incarceration, lack of employment, with being, uh, and I just read a study not so long ago, when you look at unemployment and racial discrimination in terms of which has the most impact on depression is racial discrimination. It's an easy (laughs) formula that we see repeated over and over by a number of right wing reactionaries to make money with minimal effort and the whole really right wing reactionary who make onto a minimal effort. He is a Marxist that received capitalist ad revenue. (laughs) He won't call people grifters and shit. These people really Black exist. Manosphere, from peripheral, mostly tame figures like Boyce Watkins to the most oh, rabid and unhinged Black insoles, celebrated this man's grift and harmful Ooh. ideology, or at least gave him a pass while he was alive with the hopes to maybe ride his coattails, because at the end of the day, the Black Manosphere is not a space purely for men who are concerned about Black men and boys, but a space with one specific core value, a shared desire to denigrate Black women and attain is that why they want to date them is that why they continue to try to date them this man is stupid a sense of power and patriarchy that these dudes feel they deserve or desire but will never have or at worst especially with these second wave dudes these are clearly alpha males to some extent that know that there's an audience of losers that they can grift money off of to make their lives even more alpha. And this is why for whatever elements of validity, for whatever areas of empathy, for whatever pieces of 
arguments that I've seen within this space that I rock with for especially those, you know, nuggets of masculinity studies for those areas in which there is clear information being shared about the issues that face black boys and men that I agree with and care about that I can do on my own that so many other people are already doing and they're not pairing it with O'Shea Duke Jackson. O'Shea Duke Jackson. What I'm getting at is that I can't rock with y'all. I don't rock with anyone who says they're pro-black, but their pro-blackness comes with an application process. If you're not pro-black man, pro-black woman, pro-black ghetto, pro-black queer. Once again, if this guy says he's not with you, you'll probably be doing some good decision making. <laughs> pro-black trans, pro-black children, pro-black immigrant, <laughs> pro-black working class. If your blackness excludes black people in any form or fashion, then it's not pro-black. It's anti-black. And I'm rooting for everybody black, except black Republicans. Fuck y'all. I don't fuck with y'all. So oh, like I said, if you agree with me, I want you to do good. If you don't, I want you to do terrible. He is nothing more than the high school child. I'm sorry, high school organism. Samuel suddenly passed away back in, I guess that must have been July. And some rejoiced while others mourned. And I had a few comments and they were very critical. I personally don't believe in respecting shitty people. Just and what I can tell you also don't believe in the actual debate and having the balls to say it to somebody directly when they're still alive. Like you're nothing more than a coward. Just because they died. That's how generational curses are born. If you want respect and death, earn that shit while you're alive. I feel bad for his family members. I feel bad for those who felt a deep connection to him for whatever reason. But I feel worse for the turmoil he caused. I feel turmoil. worse for the people he hurt in that just two year period on of spewing nonsense online. I feel worse. This man has multi hour videos talking about people from black Republicans, all types of stuff without any research without any facts and just putting people in the box if they disagree with them like and he has a nerve to say he doesn't have respect for people because they're anti well in his mind anti-black or whatever and they say that his he said that kevin samuel's content detrimental to community but he literally preaches nothing but marxist talking points without any facts allows you to back it up for the legacy of ridiculousness that he's left in his death that's who I care about the most. Didn't want the man to die, but don't care that he's dead. Because make no mistake, I feel same about you. because of what he did, someone is going to pick up that blueprint and try to take that vacuum of and power and attention. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, he doesn't point out the fact that there has been many black people saying that he has saved, that Kevin Samuel has saved their marriage or helped them get married. That same black woman that he put out in the in the previous video I reacted to, where he was saying that he belittled her and this and the other, the average at best woman, like she ended up getting married after that. Like, and she thanked Kevin Samuels. <laughs> but this piece of shit ain't gonna tell you that. <laughs> He's a <not> phony. <laughs> and keep collecting the bag off misogyny. And I don't fuck with that. Sorry. Unsubscribe. Well, I guess I finally finished this dumbass shit. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to react more to it. This is a two hour and 41 minute video, probably of absolutely nothing like the last video I reacted to. And like this past, what, 50 minutes I had to listen to him talk about Kevin Samuels without pointing out any facts. Um, I don't know, conveniently omitting stuff about all the black people who, black women, by the way, who said he helped them get married or stay in a marriage after thinking about leaving them. Like... He completely leaves that stuff out, but of course him and his sheet will go along with it and he'll probably, you know, keep making nonsense like this. It is truly sad. I feel sorry for anybody that does believe in this bullshit <laughs> because this is nothing more than brainwashing the echo chambers because he already said that if you don't agree with me or think the way I do, you're a coon, this and the other, you're anti-black. Like, really, how could you take anybody like that seriously? Like, he is nothing. This organism is nothing more than a joke. But somehow, you know, jokes can get 500,000 subscribers. So who knows? I, I'm not going to fucking preach Marxist ideology and none of this other woke bullshit to get money and subscribers. But at least I'm a capitalist. This dumb fuck is a Marxist. And he says he hates capitalists and conservatism, but he happy to make money and make all types of revenue off of capitalist companies through their ads. Like, really? 
But you know, people don't think that far. You say something that I agree with and I'm just shut the hell up. That's why I don't agree with completely everything that I would preach say or Kevin Samuel say or any person say really because we're all different people. We don't have to agree with each other, but we can find common ground to get to the common solutions that we all see. And those common solutions will fix a lot of problems. And that's the only stuff I'm worried about. This guy doesn't seem like he's interested in worried about or worried about fixing problems unless he somehow sees them as capitalist, white or conservative. Like he's a simple minded organism. So I don't know what I can't really be that surprised, especially after after Ram gave me some more background info on his bullshit because he's seen his videos before. This is my first time seeing it. And honestly, if it wasn't for this channel, I probably wouldn't have, wouldn't have watched it beyond 15, 10 minutes because there is no research here. There's no logic here. There's no actual honesty here. It just lies in bullshit. But let me know what you think in the comments below. If you want me to react more to his nonsense, I'll probably do it because there's no way in hell I'm going to watch it otherwise because it's not actually backed up by actual facts. But let me know. It's your boy Logos. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see y'all next time. Peace. And don't be Marxist.